Welcome to Troubleshooting Revit Structure. My name is Harlan Brum. I'm the Global Technical Lead for Revit Architecture with Autodesk Product Support. In this class, we'll talk about the top issues with Revit Structure and how to correct them. We'll talk about the troubleshooting techniques needed to solve Revit Structure specific problems. In this first section, we'll talk about how to troubleshoot beam cutbacks and look at how to correct missing grid lines. If your beams aren't cutting back correctly in a coarse representation, there are a few things you can check. First, is the issue isolated to a few beams or is the cutback incorrect throughout the entire file? If none of the members are cutting back correctly, check the structural settings dialog in the symbolic representation settings. Do you have start or end extensions? It is important to know that start or end extensions do not display in a coarse detail view. They need to be added with line work in a course view in order to display. Are there differing elevations in the connection? Depending on the elevation difference, the cutbacks might not calculate correctly. You can avoid this by using the Z justification parameter in the beams instance properties. For example, you might want a joist seat to sit on top of a framing member rather than adjusting the start and end level offsets to accommodate the height change, set those to 0 feet 0 inches, and then set the Z direction justification parameter to other and set the Z direction offset value to the height you need. Are you using custom symbolic representation? Check the beam family settings to see how the representation is defined edit the family and go to create ribbon and select category and parameters. In this dialog there is a symbolic representation family parameter that can be set as from project settings or from family. This determines whether the symbolic representation is defined by the family or the settings of the project in which it is placed. Is your beam framing into a column? If so, check the cutback settings associated with the column family. Edit the column family and enter into the category and parameters dialog. There is a beam cutback in plan parameter that can be set at from bounding box or from geometry. This will determine whether the beam cutback is determined from the column bounding box or the physical geometry of the column. Something like this might come into play if the column has nested components such as a foundation or plate together in the family. Is your beam a custom family? If so, try replacing the beam with an out-of-the-box family to see if the issue is due to the way the custom family was created. Another great tip is to try cutting and pasting the structural members to see if the representation appears correctly. If necessary, try recreating the members associated with the connection. Performing these actions helps to regenerate the Revit database and can resolve beam display cutback. Next, let's get some tips for finding missing grid lines in your project. First, Always check visibility and graphics in the view and make sure grid's annotation category is actually turned on. This is an important first step to make sure that the grids are set to be visible. Check to see if the grids are hidden in the view. To see if this is a problem, toggle on the reveal hidden elements tool on the view control bar. If you see the missing grid highlighted in purple, select it, right click, and choose unhide in view. Make sure your grid's work set is open in a project if you're using work sharing. To check this, click on the work sets icon in the collaborate tab. 
verify that your grids work set display is set to yes in the open column. Also, it's a good idea to check whether or not that work set is actually turned on in the view. Check the work sets tab in visibility and graphics to see if your grids work set is turned on in the view. Do the extents of the grid cross the view in question? Datum planes, such as grids, aren't visible in views if they don't intersect the view's plane. Try going to a view where you can see the grid, right click it, and choose Maximize 3D Extents. This will allow you to see if it shows up in the view in question. A good general rule will be to set the primary levels before laying out the grid. This will force the display of grids to show on all levels. Are the grids perpendicular to the view in question? Grids must be per perpendicular to a view in order to display. If your elevation and grid line don't intersect at a perpendicular angle, the grid won't show up in elevation. Is your grid line curved? Arced grid lines will display in section views where the center of the arc intersects and is perpendicular to the section line. In the second section, we'll talk about how to understand and prevent copy monitor problems. We'll talk about the process and best practices for copy monitor, common issues, and how to understand the coordination review dialog. Let's take a look at some process tips and best practices for resolving copy monitor issues in Revit structure. If the engineers and architects are in the same office and have access to the same network, they can share one model. They work in the model at the same time using work sharing to split up the elements within that file. A more common practice is to cross-link separate files. This is especially beneficial when the teams work in separate offices, but can be used within the same office so that both teams can work at their own pace and maintain the flexibility of having their own file. When it comes to copy monitor, make sure to set the options first before selecting any elements to copy. Run through the options dialog and make sure the settings are correct. What you set in the options dialog will only affect elements that are selected after making any changes. Copy monitoring the architect's levels won't add new corresponding floor plans to the project automatically. So after you have copied levels from the architect's file, users need to add new structural and analytical plan views to their project. The structural engineer has the option to split columns when copy monitoring. For example, if the architect adds columns that span from levels 1 to 4, it might cause problems with the analytical model, so the engineer should split the columns at each level. When it comes to design options, phasing, in-place geometry, or slanted columns, these are beyond the scope of functionality of copy monitor and will not function correctly when you attempt to copy monitor them, if at all. There are some common issues you may encounter when using the copy monitor functionality with Revit structure. Shape edited slabs will copy as flat. Users should try to use the slope arrow tool to slope slabs where possible or use a separate slab for each slope of the slab. Walls will not clean up when copy monitored if the profile sketches have been applied to them. To work around the issue, users can eliminate the profile sketches where possible. Use masking regions to hide the plan line work at the cleanup, or try using the Edit Wall Joins tool. However, this may not work in every scenario.
One issue that's critical for engineers is that walls will always be copy monitored by their center lines. Engineers may want to only copy monitor the structural portion of the architect's wall. So in the copy monitor dialog, they may set the new wall type only to represent the core structure. Unfortunately, the copied walls will not line up with the core of the architect's walls as they will be copy monitored by their center lines. The statuses within coordination review dialog may be a little tricky to understand. Let's take a look at the statuses and further dive into what they mean. Postpone or do nothing. Here, no real action is taken. This leaves the change to be addressed at a later time. Reject. This message is only an option in the host project. Selecting it makes no change in the host file. This indicates the modification made in the linked file appearing in the host file is incorrect. A change must be made to the monitored element. This needs to be to be communicated back to the other project team members to resolve the problem. Choosing Accept Difference accepts the change and monitors the new position. For example, say an architect has an enclosure that the structural engineer has a structural column inside. The architect change, changes the location of the enclosure that the engineer isn't going to move the column because it still exists within the enclosure the architect has defined. So the engineer accepts the difference in location and monitors the new position of the enclosure without modifying the column. Modify, rename, or move. The name of this command changes based on the action required. If a grid has changed or moved, the command reads modify. If the name of the monitored element has changed, the command reads rename, and choosing to do so renames the element. If a column or level is moved, the command reads move. In this class, we talked about the top issues with Revit structure and how to resolve them. We also spoke about the troubleshooting techniques for resolving Revit structure specific problems. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot.